Oh, hi guys. So I wanted to show off a new, um, something I've been waiting for for a long time. In terms of like uh, accessories that aren't made by Caltech, you have, you know, the, the cheek piece here. You've got the, a longer top rail. It's about two inches longer. And, uh, as far as like other companies making stuff for the Caltech RFB, that's it. And this gun's been out since 2008. So, um, that said, when um, Lucky Irishman first released his Rhino Rail for the RDB, I put a post out on, on uh, the Caltech Facebook page for the RFB asking if anybody had made or was going to make a handguard for the RFB. And um, Richard Murphy from Lucky Irishman uh, Industries said, yeah, he was thinking about it and he was uh, actually open to... To some feedback on what it should look like and uh, I was a part of that conversation and some of the things that came out of that was um, we weren't really worried about it weighing more we were really interested in um, having more surface area a longer handguard and being able to ditch the quad rail from Celtic um, so those are the kind of the the main things that um, went into it um, he did receive, take and receive feedback for some of the prototype stuff that he shared on Facebook. Um, one of them being that uh, the handguard um, isn't just a handguard like it is on the RFB. The handguard on the R, or sorry, on the RDB, on the RFB, the handguard actually has several functions. Um, other than just being the handguard, one of them being to retain the charging handle, and uh, the other, at least for the polymer version, have ears to protect the. Uh, gas block on one side and then your ejection chute on the other so we took all that feedback and I'd like to be able to show you what he made so this is the lucky Irishman handguard the design of this takes the end of the um, handguard to right about behind the threads on your muzzle device so it takes it right up there uh, this section here is on my gun is not actually bolted down. This is just here to kind of show you the complete piece. Um, and then you can just take this off if you want. It actually reduces the weight of the total uh, handguard uh, by about, I think this is seven ounces, just this piece. So um, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not, I'll roll, I'll roll in uh, the extra information later. But what I have found is, you know, um, this piece, this piece, these two pieces together, even with all the mounting software is, uh, or hardware, is actually lighter by about a half an ounce uh, than using the standard RFB handguard and the quad rail. So that's kind of cool. And you have more, more space. Oh yeah, uh, one of the things that I was really picking on Richard for at the Lucky Irishman Industries about his RDB rails uh, was um, the gap between the trigger and the handguard. Well, he, uh, he took that feedback um, well, and he made sure that that was no longer an issue on the RFB. So the RFB literally starts at the top of the trigger guard and covers it just like the original handguard did so that's pretty cool um, one of the downsides to the handguard though and it's not one that I realized immediately until I had one was um, well if you're gonna take the gun apart uh, you can still push out these two push pins I changed out the bolt that's right here uh, for something that's wider wider and a little longer so that I can just just have something solid holding in the handguard without it um, interfering with the this section of the um, Rifle um, Coming down So if you just push these two push bands, you can send that pull that right down still this comes free The only problem is is you know if you want to take out uh, Your charging handle um, most people are having issues with that now, or not issues. It just it doesn't it doesn't come out, and that's that's kind of the way this is set up. It blocks that from coming out. 
Um, I don't have that issue because the, for some reason, the Generation 1 RFB might have an entirely different design for the gas block. And so um, the extra few millimeters it would take to stop this from coming out, I can still pull mine out if I pull straight up. So I can still take mine apart, but you may not be able to. Also, and then on a Gen 1, because the, the piston is retained, you'll have to drop the handguard at some point if you want to clean the pistol, the piston. Um, whereas on the Gen 2s, since it's held in by a spring that pushes in the um, piston, that'll be easy to clean. So um, if you've got a Gen 2 and you don't mind, you know, locking this gun to the rear, pulling your piston out, letting this go forward, and then just opening this up, uh, you can get to just about everything. Um, and you just push the pin out that's holding the uh, bolt, it'll come right out, and then you have access to the entire internals. Um, outside of that, I mean, it, it is what it is. It looks cool. Um, this is actually, like I said, this is detachable. You can take this right off. Or if you want, you can put a um, front sight as far forward as you can. So, I don't know. This is uh, this is kind of neat. I'm really glad that uh, Richard Murphy from Lucky Irishman Industries decided to uh, undertake this task. It did take him about a year. Uh, from about today, I think. It's been about a year. But I'm really glad that he made it. And um, I can't wait to get out the range to shoot, shoot this. So, um, if you get one, just remember, just remember, you're probably not going to be able to take the charging handle out unless you take the handguard off. But outside of that, that's the only downside I have to this gun. Like, all of the aesthetic stuff that I had problem-wise with the RDB is not here. So, great work. Thank you, Richard Murphy. And uh, I can't wait to see more of your stuff come out. You guys have a great day.